Hello, hello, and welcome back to Cars of Glasgow. I'm Thomas, and today you join me with the 2024 Subaru Solterra in touring trim. The car behind me is finished in midnight black and kindly supplied by Eaglesham Garage. Now, this is an all-electric Subaru based on the platform of the Toyota BZ4X and Lexus RZ. Now, this Subaru offers all-wheel drive as standard. It uses just over a 71 kilowatt hour battery and offers about 257 miles of range as equipped in touring package with the 20 inch alloy wheels. However, if you get the limited model, you do get about 280 miles of claimed range. This one, as I mentioned, is a touring package. It's over 55,000 pound here in the UK. And this model is finished in the midnight black paintwork. Now, let's start off the aesthetics and the design of the Solterra. Now, up front, we have changed, or they have changed, the headlights and the front bumper, which give you that little bit of a distinct look. Same as the circular fog lights up front with that silver trim around the rear, the rear at the bottom of the nose. We do have the grey plastic cladding over the wheel arches to give it that off-road appearance but I do think they're going to be useful if you do take it off-road because you're not going to be scratching up your paintwork or if you're in a car park and somebody opens the door against it it's going to hit that plastic versus your good nice metal paintwork. This car is loaded with technology so we do have things like the front camera up front with the ultrasonic sensors and you can even see through there the airflow going through the fenders it's like a little aerodynamic vent which is quite novel to see on just your family friendly crossover. So up front it does look like we should have a bonnet or something like that or a fruit or a frunk but we do not. It's just the motors and cables and things under there so I wouldn't advise putting anything up front there. We do have these headlights up front that are quite attractive as you can see with the kind of four individual units inside the daytime running light housing. A little bit different to what we've seen, say, for example, in the BZ4X or Lexus RZ. But that's pretty much the front of the car. Pretty inoffensive, you know, modern-day EV. I do like the 20-inch alloy wheels, however, on this car. As I said, if I see it in that blue colour, this does stand out to me more than the other two siblings. And Subaru want to let you know this is an electric vehicle, so we do have EV badgings on both of the fenders. Now work our way along the side of the car, we do have black cladding on the sides down at the bottom of the doors, going around the wheel arches, again emphasising that SUV-ness. Round the rear does look pretty similar to what you've seen on the Toyota BZ4X, however what you're going to notice is we don't have a continuous bar like, unlike the Toyota, this has two individual rear light clusters as you can see there, with the little kind of claw shape going under the tail light. A carryover from the other products is we do have this little spoiler here, which I quite like and my mum quite liked as well when we picked it up today. It's quite a nice little touch. And we don't have a rear wiper on the Solterra, so it kind of acts like a saloon in that way the dirt and debris should not splash up onto there. And this car kind of has two spoilers if you look at it from this angle. We've got one at the bottom of the tailgate and one at the top there. A little bit of an interesting design quirk but worth mentioning. Around the rear of the Solterra not too much else to point out so I'll go ahead and open the boot. Touch of a button under here, electronically opens up and we do have a decent size squared off area. Now we do have about 450 litres of boot space in the back of the Solterra and this being the touring trim we can see the Harman Kardon sound system up on the left there. Now the side of this car is not carpeted. Now this can be a plus if you're carrying, do not say for example dogs, <laughs> you don't want the dog hair to get in, this can be wipeable or equal if you're doing more lifestyle things. It's the hard plastic which means this can get wiped down. So it's not necessarily a negative. We do have a split opening boot floor here which allows you to put charging cables and other bits underneath. And as you can see with the big CCS charging cable there. You can pull this through if you did want to have that like so. And that's how that's going to look covering across. But as you can appreciate you probably would have that open just to throw in your goodies and you can fold the seat 60-40 and it opens up a quite a carbonous area. And that's pretty much the rear of the boot. Nothing clever or anything really hanging out. We do have little things like this little storage there for maybe like a shopping bag or something like that. But yeah, not too anything 
obvious else back here. We do have an electric closing tailgate. Touch a button and that's going to close. So go ahead and jump inside the back of the Subaru. Oh. And just like what we've seen in the Toyota, we do have plenty of legroom. It's very spacious back here and it's deceiving at how spacious the rear of this car is versus the exterior dimensions. The road floor, the floor and the bottom of it is a little bit raised and I guess it's accommodating the batteries. Found the same thing in the Toyota but it's not, you know, going to upset you too much. You can still fit my seat underneath and that seat's all the way back pretty much and I've still got plenty of room. If I turn that to the side there, you're going to be able to see how much room we have for the <laughs> rear passengers. It's crazy. So even if you were putting your child seat in, clipping that in, there's still plenty of room back here for families and great visibility in greenhouse with all this glass. Now, I'm 5 foot 11. I've got plenty of headroom. Decent sized shoulder room. We do have this little armrest here that pulls down in the middle. Some cup holders and extra storage. It is all weather aligned back here, or at least what Subaru is calling the weather. There's enough amenities back here. We've got USB-C chargers, two heated seats for the outer seats, climate vents, and map pockets, which are lined inside as well, which is quite nice. A wee bit of material, so you can put your iPads and things like that in there pretty much a flat floor as well so even for myself to sit in the middle you could put three adults or teenagers whatever it is in the back of this car and they're going to be pretty comfortable just because it is flat and there's plenty of room now with the glass roof i am touching it a little bit just because of this here so if you went without the glass roof which i've seen in the other um sister products like the bz4x you can get somebody in the middle there without it touching just because the glass roof is taken a couple of inches of headroom there but if you're small and five foot eleven you're probably going to be all right back here or i could sit doing it a little bit more uncomfortably for a wee bit but it's fine you know it depends what you're after but i think it's a good space back here considering there's a cabin as well like the size of the car outside the footprint doesn't always match the inside this is a positive way do you know i think it's just under five meters in length actually i've got my wee cheat sheet here the length of this car is 4.69 meters so it's not actually that huge on the outside but you've got so much legroom and headroom um in this car it feels a lot more cavernous so if you are carrying maybe three children and your family want to grow this kind of car is going to be suitable for you so go ahead and jump inside the solterra we do have physical handles which is nice to see and on the door card here we do have all round electric windows this is your button there to fold in the window wing mirrors if you want to sorry to fold them in or you can leave an auto we do have two stage memory seats and you can do the child lock button as well as you can see we've got the garnished black gloss plastic and the harman kardon sound system with a reasonable size cup holder on the side there and it's kind of like a rubberized vinyl material where your arm's going to rest at least it's squishy up here is a little bit harder um, and this kind of little bit of silver trim just on the edge of the black to give a bit of a surface I do like the Solterra flow mats and ignore the autumnal mess down there. That is just the joys of living in Scotland in almost winter. <laughs> we do have some physical buttons on the right here for your tailgate release and your automatic high beams. This little bit here, which I think is for a card. I couldn't quite work out what to put in there. So I could fit a card and set it in there, but not quite sure what it's for. And then your bonnet release there. As I mentioned, it's not storage, unfortunately, up front. We do have electric seats in the Solterra Touring, so these are weather. We've got lumbar support as well as all this adjustment here, if you wish to adjust it. Now go ahead and jump inside, and this is where it can get exciting because we've got this little display up here that's raised, as you can see. It's slightly different to maybe a conventional car because you're sitting here with your steering wheel like so hands on the handles and you kind of peer over when you're looking at so when you're driving and that's going to come up with the information but out with that we've got a little infrared bit to check you on your eyeballs physical buttons on the left hand side for your volume and your phone etc and that does the lexus thing of moving the little screen <laughs> across digitally of course and then the right hand side is where all your driver's assist is do have toyota parts bin 
stocks here for your indicators and your wipers. And yeah, pretty much everything's fairly logically laid out. Now it is worth noting that we do have a kind of fabric material on top of the dash. We've seen that in the BZ4X as well. But it's just a nice little addition, I guess, to kind of break up the cabin. Now, I would say if you're looking for a car with a nice blend of buttons and modern technology, this could be an EV for you because we do have nice big buttons for things like your cameras, or drive modes, whatever it may be. Um, and the Subaru is unique with having this X mode, which can help with snow and mud, etc. And underneath here, we do have USB-A and wireless phone charger, and it's behind this little grid here when it's charging. Now, just like the BZ4X and RZ, we have lost out on a glove box, but we do have storage underneath here to put in like your logbook and things like that. And there are some charging ports underneath there. Unlike the Lexus, we do not have the little radiant heaters under there, which is a shame. So your knees are not going to be warm, which was a nice touch I've seen in the Lexus RZ300E. Now the little screen in front of us here does have various things. So you're able to push that into, you know, like I mentioned in the Lexus, you can slide that left and right. And then you're able to go through various features on this car like so and today we're getting 3.1 miles per kilowatt hour which i think is actually all right considering it's an all-wheel drive vehicle and as you can see new world driving 77 miles on 40 percent charge so this is a 12.3 inch touchscreen straight out of toyota and lexus it's fast responsive i've covered it in those videos there it does have apple carplay and android auto and these are your volume controls unlike a rotary knob you have to kind of push these buttons I'm not going to play any music because of copyright, but the sound system in the Harvard and Carbon sound system does sound pretty decent. Um, and I quite like the Mark Levinson as well in the Lexus RZ. And that is probably a differentiating factor as well between this and even the Toyota because that gets a JBL sound system. Now down below here, we do have touch capacitive buttons. We don't know for things like your heated seats, rear defrost, whatever it may be. Free stage, I typically leave an auto and let the car work it out, but the driver and passenger can work that out what you want. And we do have dual zone climate control, which is a nice little touch as well. You've got physical buttons to control your fan speeds. I couldn't see online, and I can't see it in this car, like things for cooled seats, which we can see in the RZ. They do have little holes in the leather, but yeah, I can't see ventilation as an option there. As I mentioned, we do have nice big buttons for things like your camera. The X mode pops up, and we can see that popping up in the middle there which is nice to see just because this is the kind of off-road adventure ready version. Now, this is the drive selector. Just like the Toyota and Lexus, you push down, twist left, and there's the cameras, and it's binging and bonging away. Push down for neutral and push all the way to the right for drive and a separate pretense P for park. Now, we do have auto hold, which is nice and easy as well. Just like we've seen in the Toyota Lexus products, that prevents you rolling away a set of lights. All in all, this is a fairly logically laid out cluster, easy to use technology, and a nice plethora of buttons on the car. Now, in the centre here, we do have two decent sized cup holders, which kind of looks like um, spectacles or some big massive ski goggles or something to me there. And then underneath, we do have some storage there, lined with the fuzzy stuff, and yeah, that's a little tray that you can pull out if you wanted to reveal a little bit more storage underneath. But I could imagine most people are probably just going to leave it like so and leave that in there. Up above, we've got various buttons for your dome lights. And if you hit this close button, this is going to close the blind for the big glass roof. As you can see, fairly fast and does a pretty good job of blocking out the light. And then touch the open button again like so and it opens all at once with one press so that's quite good seats themselves are quite like designed you know i've got a little bit of break in here this little bit shoulder room um but yeah the fairly nice fairly squidgy comfortable and again this car has been designed with comfort in mind and that kind of off-road adventure versus sportiness and performance now it is worth noting on the sides of each of the steering column here we do have a plus and a minus now this changes the 
brake regeneration. So interestingly, if you add on the plus, it removes one layer of the regen, or you can push the minus, it intensifies it. So if you have it on four out of four, it's going to pretty much pull you to a stop, just the way it would be like in a Tesla Polestar when you have that kind of on the firm setting, you put your foot off the accelerator and the car just kind of pulls naturally to a stop. You get used to it, do you know, and most EV drivers quite like that, but if you don't, you can reduce that to a number one and it kind of acts like a normal ICE version of an automatic where it just kind of creeps and rolls um, to a stop and you have to apply brake. So that's just something to let you know. Uh, but yeah, everything in the car feels pretty solid um, in terms of quality, do you know, like it's not, you'd expect that to rattle or whatever, like I have seen other cars recently that rattle away and none of this is like pushing away too much, um, which is a testament to the quality of the car. So up front, my 5 foot 11 self is fairly comfortable. We do have reach and rake adjustment, we do have electric seat adjustment, we can go up and down. And yeah, I can get myself comfortable in this cabin all right. I said I do have a couple of inches of headroom above me. So if you're probably up to about six foot three, six foot four, I'd imagine you'd be fairly comfortable back here. And if you're a smaller driver, then yes, you can adjust the steering wheel out towards your in. It does have a lot of reach and rake and equally the seat can be raised as well. So you should be okay in this car, um, regardless if you're tall or small. Now, up on the road, there we go, sitting at 64 miles per hour. If you're hearing any wind or road noise, that might be coming through potentially. Um, put it back into normal mode. We get 3.1 miles per kilowatt hour. We sit up quite high in the traffic as well. I'm sitting above like a Ford Focus and a Volkswagen Walker in front of me there. So you do have good visibility out front. And I do like the greenhouse as well in this car. Got big mirrors, good visibility to all the glass around you. A great 360 camera, very HD quality, which actually I was impressed by it that much. It was better than some of the, say, German manufacturers that have been in this year. We do have a Harman Kardon sound system in the touring package, which is decent. You know, I do like a good sound system. And if you do like sound yourself, it could be worth checking that out get the touring package for that um, option but yeah that's pretty much it up front we do have these little paddles behind the steering wheel which does help for regenerative braking so you can adjust it weirdly you push the minus one you pull that towards you it increases the amount of regenerative braking you're going to get from the car so it's a maximum right now i push the plus button and it alleviates it by one notch I don't know, that's just, in my head that seems weird, usually I'd think you'd put the plus on to add regen, but you're pushing the plus to remove it, um, it's just a, a thing in my head anyway, it could be normal for everybody else, but handling wise it's definitely set up for comfort, not too much body roll, like there is some, but not as drastic as others, and it's definitely more comfortable than other kind of crossovers that I have been in this year. I'd say it's above average in terms of just comfort with the seats themselves are quite comfortable and just the way it absorbs the lumps and bumps on the road. Um, but yes, dynamic wise, it's pretty much competent average, what we want to expect from your electric crossover. Um, so yeah, that is the Subaru Solterra. I would cross shop this with probably Toyota BZ4X. Um, and maybe the Hyundai Ioniq 5, just depending on what you're after. Like this is standing out because Subaru went out of their way to give you a vehicle that is a little bit more adventure capable. You know, it's a little, they went more down the off-road route versus, say for example, the performance route on the road. So that's why it's going to be different to, you know, say for example, a Polestar Performance or Tesla Model Y dual motor, something like that. There is only one model configuration with regards to the Solterra, so you just get it as is with the dual motor, um, like the way it is set up. You know, there's no uh, upgrade in power or a model that gives you an extra long range. You know, the range is dependent on wheel size, so you're going to be about 280 miles on smaller wheels, and I think 257, top of my head, claims on these 20-inch wheels, which they are 
got the unique design versus like the Toyota and the Lexus models and this car shared its platform with and it's worth checking out the warranties as well because it's a decent warranty but it's just not as good as the 10 year warranty you get with Toyota and Lexus but I will caveat and say this does have some off-road capabilities that the other two do not offer um, so that X mode thing might be worth it for you and also being built from the same components I would like to think it's going to be as reliable as the Toyota and Lexus counterparts so that's all I've got to say for this video thank you so much to Eagles from Garage for loaning me this video or this car for this video and make sure to check out all the other social medias I'll leave all that description below thank you for watching ciao